Good evening aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankar AIS Academy. Today's date is 27th December 2023. Displayed here are the list of topics we are going to see today. Now let us get into the discussion. Look at this science page article. It talks about a specialized cell which help the animals to survive in its habitat. These specialized cells are called nematocyst and it is not present in all animals but in certain class of animals called cnidarians and these types of animals live by injecting toxins into the body of the prey and then hunt it for example jellyfish corals sea anemones and hydras have this nematocyst cells so let us see how this nematocyst works for example take a jellyfish the nematocyst cell inside the jellyfish contains the toxins so when jellyfish comes in contact with their prey the nematocyst ejects the toxin and paralyzes the prey so this is how jellyfish hunt and attack their prey so nematocyst cell help in hunting the prey for jellyfish so this is about nematocyst in our analysis let us see about the cell and the important organelles of the cell from our prelims exam perspective see cell is a basic structural and functional unit of any living organism and the cell can be divided into two types based on the cellular structure that is prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell is that the eukaryotic cell is like an advanced cell which is present in plants and animals the prokaryotic cell is mostly seen in the unicellular organisms now let us see the components of the cell the components of the cell are also called as cell organelles and there are two types of cell organelles the membrane bound organelles and non membrane bound organelles the examples for membrane bound organelles are nucleus mitochondria lysosome and the examples for non membrane bound organelles are cell wall ribosomes etc now let us see the important points about various organelles of cell firstly let us take up nucleus see it is a large organelle that stores the cell's dna and it acts like a cpu of the cell the chromosomes are present inside the nucleus secondly about endoplasmic reticulum the endoplasmic reticulum is a network of minor tubular structures which are dispersed throughout the cytoplasm of the cell so they act as a transport system of the cell and they are responsible for movement of various materials in and around the cell thirdly about lysosomes lysosomes are waste disposal system of the cell it helps to keep the cell clean by digesting any foreign materials like bacteria or unwanted waste products see when there is a disturbance inside the cell's metabolism for example when the cell got damaged the lysosomes release their enzymes and digest their own cell so lysosomes act as a suicide bags of the cell now finally let us see about the cytoplasm it is present in both plant and animal cells and it is like a jelly like substance which is found between the cell membrane and the nucleus it consists of water organic substance and inorganic compounds so this is about the important organelles of the cell with this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic look at this article the article here is about 2024 breakthrough prices it specifically focuses on breakthrough prices provided to life sciences so in our discussion we will see some facts about this price and we will also see the significance of discoveries in life sciences which were awarded in 2024 See this breakthrough prize is a set of international awards established in 2012. In 2012, Yuri Milner and his wife Julia Milner established the breakthrough prize. In 2013, other billionaires like Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, Mark Zuckerberg, the co-founder of Facebook and others joined the initiative and started funding this prize. The main aim of breakthrough prize is to honor those who have made transformative discoveries. The award is provided under three categories: the breakthrough prize in mathematics, and this is awarded to recognize outstanding achievements in the field of mathematics, and the prize in fundamental physics. This is awarded for major achievements in the field of physics, and the prize for life sciences. This is awarded to recognize significant contributions to understanding complex life process. An additional point here is that breakthrough prize in life sciences is that one prize per year. which is designated for work contributing to the understanding of parkinson's disease and neurodegenerative disorders so this breakthrough prize laureates receive 3 million in prize money note that the nobel laureates receive 1 million dollars 
so this makes breakthrough prize more rewarding than nobel prize the laureates for breakthrough prize are selected by a committee of previous prize winners in each respective field so these are some of the prelims related points about breakthrough prize now moving forward let us see the contribution made by laureates for 2024 breakthrough prize in life sciences yelan sidranskay thomas yeser andrew singleton and these three were awarded for their work related to parkinson's disease they discovered a mutation in a known gene called gba1 and they also identified another risk gene called lrrk2 now how is this significant see once we identify the risk gene associated with the disease then we can reasonably predict the likelihood of a person developing the disease the breakthrough prizes on life sciences were awarded for discovery of multi combination drug which is effective in treating cystic fibrosis here cystic fibrosis is a genetic condition and it primarily affects lungs and digestive system it leads to the production of thick sticky mucus in various organs of body finally the award was also given for carl jun and michael sadelin for their work in developing car t cell therapy so we know that our immune system fights infections and diseases car t therapy takes the immune cells called t cells from the person's blood and it is genetically modified to attack only the cancer cell so this is how car t cell therapy works and it is used effectively for the treatment in blood cancers so these are the contributions made by the winners of 2024 breakthrough prize so this is all regarding this discussion now let us move to the next topic look at the news article the government is working on production linked incentive scheme 2.0 this is to ensure adequate raw material supply for the steel sector in 2024 so in this context let us understand about pli scheme in our prelims perspective see the pli scheme was launched in march 2020 the scheme initially targeted three industries that is mobile and allied component manufacturing electrical component manufacturing and medical devices but currently the scheme covers nearly 14 sectors the main objective of the scheme is to reduce india's import dependency and to scale up the domestic manufacturing capability it also aims to increase import substitution and enable employment generation the pli scheme also invites foreign companies to set up their units in india and encourage domestic enterprises to expand their production units so these are the objectives of the scheme now let us see the futures firstly output oriented rather than input based the scheme rewards manufacturers for increasing their production and scales rather than for investing in capital or infrastructure so the scheme rewards the increase in outputs for manufacturers secondly it is a time bound and have sunset class it means the scheme is valid only for period of 5 to 6 years depending on the sector thirdly it is performance based and have graded incentive structure the incentive rates varies according to the category of manufacturer the level of value addition the type of product and the year of operation so the incentives are based on these factors for example the scheme will provide an incentive of 4% to 6% to eligible companies for a period of 5 years next the scheme is flexible it means it allows manufacturers to choose their own base year investment plan and production targets finally the scheme is aligned with national priorities and strategic sectors they aim to reduce import dependence promote innovation and research and development and also creating employment opportunities so these are the important features of production linked incentive scheme so that's all about the discussion now let us move to the next topic look at this editorial article it talks about inclusive growth as you all know india is working to become 5 trillion dollar economy in the near future but the main obstacle in this path is the mismatch between skills jobs and incomes many are unemployed and even if they are employed they get insufficient incomes due to skill mismatch so we need an inclusive and sustainable economic growth only an inclusive growth will generate jobs and lead to sustainable growth for all so this is what the article is trying to say in this context let us understand the significance of inclusive growth using our mains answer writing approach so look at the question india has made significant strides towards achieving inclusive growth in its socio economic landscape in this context critically evaluate the role of inclusive policies and their effectiveness in reducing socio economic disparities so this question can be asked in gs paper 3 
under the syllabus inclusive growth and issues arising from it now let us see how to approach this question see the only key word in the question is critically evaluate when the word critically evaluate is given you have to analyze both the pros and cons of a matter and make a fair judgment based on the analysis so here we are going to critically evaluate the role of inclusive policies and their effectiveness in reducing socio-economic disparities so this is how we are going to approach the question now let us look at the introduction in the introduction we can give a general definition about inclusive growth inclusive growth is a model that aims to achieve economic growth by ensuring equitable opportunities and benefits to all sections of society it means having access to essential services in health and education for the poor this way you can give the introduction for your answer now moving on we can split the body part into two parts firstly we are going to critically evaluate the role of inclusive policies the inclusive policies ensure marginalized groups are part of development fabric for example inclusion of rural communities in economic development process through the schemes like mg narega this scheme provides a legal guarantee for 100 days of employment for the rural poor however the scheme faces certain challenges like lack of transparency in identifying the beneficiaries delay and insufficiency in the funds etc inclusive policies like atmanirbhar bharat rozgar yojana also plays important role in creating new job opportunities however other employment schemes like rozgar mela and Deen Dayal Antodhya Yojana, National Urban Livelihoods Mission, lacks awareness among people. Inclusive health policies ensure affordable and accessible health care services for all, despite their economic position. For example, Ayushman Bharat is a universal health insurance scheme that provides free health care services to over 40% of country's population. It offers a health cover of nearly 5 lakhs. You can write these points in the first part of the answer. Now moving on to the second part, here you have to critically evaluate the effectiveness of inclusive policies in reducing socio-economic disparities. Firstly, the schemes like MG Nareha, apart from enhancing livelihood security of rural poor, it rejuvenates the natural resource base of rural areas and it creates a durable and productive rural asset. It provides empowerment to socially disadvantaged, especially women, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes through the process of right based legislation secondly the schemes like pradhan mantri mudra yojana facilitate self employment by providing collateral free loans up to 10 lakhs but the success of such schemes requires the success of skill development schemes if you take national rural health mission it seeks to provide equitable and affordable health care to rural population but according to national family health survey the stunting is higher among rural children than urban areas so this reflect the lack of focus in nutritional levels of rural children so you can write these points in the second part of the answer now finally we have arrived to the conclusion inclusive growth is necessary to achieve sustainable development which will make a society where economic prosperity is combined with social equity we should emphasize inclusive growth model that paves way for more resilient harmonious and progressive future by attaining the sustainable development goals so in this way you can write the conclusion this is all about the discussion now let us move to the next topic look at this news article it talks about the recent pact signed between india and russia this pact is regarding the construction of future power generating units of kudangulam nuclear power plant so this is the crux of the news article in our discussion let us see india's nuclear program and various key facts regarding nuclear plants of india See, India has three-stage nuclear program and this aims to utilize the vast thorium reserves of India. This is because India has around 25% of thorium reserves of the world. Know that first stage uses pressurized heavy water reactors based on natural uranium. Moreover, the second stage uses fast breeder reactors and uses plutonium as fission material. The third stage has thermal breeder reactors which has uranium-233 and uses uranium-232 which are abandoned in India. So this is the three-stage nuclear program of India. Now let us see the India's nuclear power plants from prelims perspective. See India has 22 operating nuclear power reactors and the installed capacity is 6780 megawatt. Out of these 22 reactors, 18 reactors 
are pressurized heavy water reactors and four reactors are light water reactors. Here the difference between pressurized heavy water reactors and the light water reactor is the pressurized reactor is fueled by natural uranium and the light water reactor is fueled by low enriched uranium. So look at the map. This is the distribution of nuclear power plants throughout India. Firstly, the oldest nuclear power reactor, Tarapur nuclear reactor in Maharashtra. It was started in 1969 and it has two boiling water reactors and two pressure heavy water reactor. This is the second most powerful reactor in India. See the largest nuclear power plant in India is Kudangulam nuclear power plant and it is located in Tamil Nadu and it has installed capacity of 2000 megawatt. Then Karakpur atomic power station which is India's first indigenously developed nuclear reactor and it is situated in Gujarat and this reactor has 700 megawatt of pressurized heavy water reactor. So these are the important nuclear reactors of India. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. Indian Council of Medical Research has invited expression of interest from eligible organizations to manufacture non-invasive hemoglobinometers. Here the hemoglobinometers are devices that are used to check the hemoglobin in our blood. So this device is used to test and screen anemia. So this is the crux of the news article given here. Now in our analysis, let us see about anemia from prelims perspective. Firstly, what is anemia? See, it is a condition in which the number of red blood cells or hemoglobin concentration is lower than the normal level. Know that hemoglobin is a protein that carries oxygen in your body and gives the red color to the blood. So the decreased hemoglobin content will lead to decreased capacity of blood to carry oxygen to our body tissues. This will result in increased fatigue, weakness, dizziness and shortness of breath. So this is the basic of anemia. Now let us see the causes of anemia. The first and major cause is iron deficiency. Know that iron is necessary for synthesis of hemoglobin. So when there is deficiency, it leads to decreased synthesis of hemoglobin and leads to anemia. So the main reason for anemia is iron deficiency. But note that other nutritional deficiencies can also cause anemia. If there is deficiency in vitamin B9, vitamin A, vitamin B12, there can be chances of anemia. And note that pernicious anemia is caused due to the deficiency of vitamin B12. Some other causes of anemia are inherited conditions like thalassemia or sickle cell anemia, some viral infections, autoimmune conditions and various chronic diseases and cancer can also lead to anemia. See anemia is a social evil which is caused due to various poverty related issues. Firstly with respect to increased cereal centric diets. As this kind of diet is easily accessible to poor due to public distribution system, this will lead to relatively less consumption of iron rich foods like meat, fish, eggs and dark green leafy vegetables. Secondly, WHO data shows that anemia can be associated with conditions like poor water quality and lack of access to good sanitation conditions. Now let us see the data about India's anemic burden. According to National Family Health Survey of 2021, India's anemic burden has increased in an alarming manner. Let us see the data regarding this. 57% of women in age group 15 to 49 and 67% of children are anemic according to National Family Health Survey. Moreover, 25% of men and 31% of adolescent boys are anemic. This shows increased prevalence of anemia among Indian men. Due to this worrying trends, Health Ministry has noted that anemia is a public health challenge and they are taking various steps like anemic Mukt Bharat to overcome this challenge. So this is all about the discussion. We have seen basics about anemia, what are the causes of anemia and some data about anemia in our National Family Health Survey. Now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion. Look at the first question. It is about production linked incentive scheme. The PLI scheme is exclusively designed to promote manufacturing activities in the electronic sector. This statement is incorrect because it is not exclusively designed for electronic sector. It includes various sectors like electronics, automobile, pharmaceuticals and textiles. Look at the second statement. It proposes a financial incentive to boost domestic manufacturing and attract large investments in electronics value chain. This statement is correct. The incentives given are calculated on the basis of incremental sales. 
Yes, this statement is also correct. So the correct answer is option B, only two. Now look at the second question. It is about India's nuclear power plants. Kakrapur plant, first major plant developed as cooperation between India and France. Kudungulam plant, it is the largest heavy water reactor of India. Tarapur plant, it is the oldest nuclear reactor of India. So how many of the pairs are correctly matched? The first pair is incorrect because it is the indigenous reactor of India. The second pair is also incorrect. It is India's largest and light water reactor of India. The third pair is correct. Yes, it is the oldest reactor of India. So the correct answer is option A. Now look at the third question. Which of the following cell organelles does not contain DNA? Nucleus, chloroplast, mitochondria, all these three contains DNA. Only the lysosomes does not contain any DNA. So the correct answer is option B. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS YouTube channel. Thank you.